The effects of paper money had ravaged the new United States for nearly a decade, leading to booms of paper money only followed by the busts of credit contractions and recessions that would soon follow. As a new government was created, they remembered how the paper money had destabilized trade in the colonies. The founding fathers set the groundwork for all the states to have equal footing with one another. There was no tariffs to be levied one state to another, this being one of the fundamental foundations of American prosperity in the decades to follow. The Founding Fathers understood that consistency was the key component to prosperity. They wrote into the Constitution and gave Congress the power to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and of foreign coin. The power was exclusive because the state's governments were prohibited in Article 1, Section 10 from coining money, emitting paper money, or making any but gold and silver legal tender of payment of debts. The Spanish dollar still circulated as the primary currency in the colonies. It was estimated that nearly 80% of the currency circulating in the Americas was of foreign coinage. It was widely accepted that the dollar would be the foundation of the U.S. monetary system. They provided stability by defining an accepted weight of silver to be defined as one dollar. Foreign coins would be accepted in the United States for the decades to come. Then in 1791, Alexander Hamilton stepped up and had a proposal to increase the money supply of the United States. It would introduce a bimetallic standard, gold and silver coins to be accepted, and they would be minted at a fixed weight to one another. This became law with the Coinage Act of 1792. It set a standard that the value of silver and gold would be 15 to 1. Anyone could bring gold and silver to the mint and it would be struck into coins for them. The two most common coins were to be the silver dollar and the gold $10 coin. This well-intentioned method of introducing two metals into the currency supply at a fixed rate was doomed to failure. As time went on, the market value abroad would tug and pull at the currency supply of America. By early 1805, as silver mines in Mexico began to export larger and larger amounts of silver, the market ratio for gold and silver moved to 15.75 to 1. Silver coinage versus gold coinage was a discount now in the United States. Merchants would take their silver dollars and exchange them for gold coins in America, then melt them down and sell them in Europe for a profit. By the end of 1810, most of the gold coins had left America, and the markets had been flooded with silver coinage. By the 1820s, American silver dollars had become lighter than the Spanish counterparts, by 1 to 5%. As a result, the Spanish dollars began to re-export from America, and America was left with only silver eagle dollars in circulation and fractional Spanish as they were still accepted at face value, though it overvalue their weight in silver. To make matters worse, the American dollar was accepted at face value in the West Indies, and so American silver dollars started to be exported for trade in the West Indies. This left America with no gold coins and only Spanish fractional silver coinage in circulation. The act of fixing the prices of two metals against the odds of the market to increase the currency supply and circulation had sacrificed reliability for quantity and stability, yet ended up with neither. If you have not already watched the former parts of this series, please join us in our US monetary history link above, and to go to the next video, click the one below. Never miss out on another video, and make sure to hit that like and subscribe.